Hi, everyone. Welcome to part two of Conversations with Nicole with Dr. Craig Cohen of Inlet Physician Medicine out of Merle's Inlet, South Carolina. We have much more to talk about. So this is part two of our conversation with him and his expertise is on hormone therapy, uh, regenerative medicine and chiropractic rehabilitation. But today we want to focus on two important topics to him and to us, of course, hormones and anti-aging and then setting the record straight on hormones. Dr. Cohen, a lot of information about hormones, especially obviously for women. What do we do? What do we need? early on in life, midway in life, and later. So go ahead and let's just start this conversation about hormones and anti-aging. I know I'm there. I don't want to admit it, but I am. <laughs> well, you are you are the anti-aging person. So you, you just seem to get younger and younger. But for all of us other people, you know, it is an important topic. And I tell you, the way I usually start this off and explain it to people is trying to dispel some misconceptions. And the first one being that I think people have heard from other people, even providers, that hormones are dangerous. And that all comes back to a study that was done in 2001. It was a Women's Health Initiative study. And it was a landmark study. And they looked at um, a lot of different things, but one of those was hormones. And they studied two hormones in particular, and that was Premarin and Provera. Now, those are synthetic hormones. And when they studied those hormones, they did find that increased the risk of cancer, particularly breast cancer, and even strokes in women that took Premarin and Provera. And what's interesting is Premarin is the estrogen, and it's actually derived from horse estrogen. And Provera is the synthetic version of progesterone. Now, the estrogen got the bad rap. And... Unfortunately, it wasn't the estrogen that was causing issues. It was the progestin that was the problem. Needless to say, doctors, as soon as they got that study, they ripped all their patients off hormones. And unfortunately, all these women suffered and continue to suffer because doctors are misinformed and people are misinformed because they think hormones are bad. So I guess we need to clarify the difference between synthetic and bioidentical. Yes, synthetic hormones are dangerous. I would never put my patients on, synthetic, on any synthetic hormone. But bioidentical hormones, they're plant-derived. They match the same chemical structure as the thyroid your body makes naturally. And all the studies show not only protective nature, but also effective nature when using bioidentical. So I just want to clear up the difference between synthetic and bioidentical because it makes a huge difference and unfortunately, women are scared off, but they're not talking about apples to apples. They're referring to synthetic hormones and not bioidentical. So why do we need to add these hormones as we age? Explain that. Yeah, I think we could start with estrogen. You know, estrogen is so, so important to women. And uh, as you go in or anyone goes into menopause, uh, their ovaries stop producing estrogen. And estrogen is dynamic. It's so important. It's important for a lot of different things, but the main things that it's important for is cardiovascular protection. Number two is it increases the incidence of weight gain. And as you get older and your hormones change, you tend to gain more weight. And it's that weight gain, which we call visceral body fat, that causes inflammation in the body that leads to chronic disease. So weight gain is very important as we get older to try to avoid because that causes high cholesterol, high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes. Um, the other thing is, is bone loss. You know, osteoporosis, I tell my patients, the mortality rate of a fractured hip in menopausal woman is higher than the mortality rate of that of breast cancer. So you're more likely to die from a fractured hip than you were from even a breast cancer diagnosis. That's how serious it is you know, the osteoporosis and osteopenia. Right. You ever get, unfortunate other things are loss of collagen, so you start to look old. Vaginal dryness and atrophy, so intimacy becomes more difficult because it becomes painful. Um, you know, and just overall how you feel. But we think about the symptoms, the hot flashes, the night sweats. You know, that's from typically loss of estrogen. So estrogen is, is paramount, and estrogen is king. Um, so... It's really protective of health, but mostly cardiovascular, Alzheimer's, dementia, 
where you don't have estrogen, your risk increases, um, and just overall function, joint pain, all that is really improved by replacing your estrogen as quick as possible. So what about progesterone? We need that as well. Oh, progesterone, the antagonistic part, partner of estrogen, right? <laughs> so without progesterone, you can run into a few different problems. Now, it enhances the benefit of estrogen. And all the studies show the breast cancer protective benefit of progesterone. But you said it was the progestin that was the problem in the WHI study. It is. It was the synthetic version of that drug, but the bioidentical version is breast cancer protective. And every study shows that. Um, it was a misconception, too, that a lot of doctors think that if you have a hysterectomy and you, have, you don't have a uterus, you don't need progesterone, but you do because you're going to lose the breast cancer protection. And also estrogen dominance. You don't want to have too much estrogen so that progesterone helps you know, balance the, the progesterone helps balance the estrogen. And women love it because it helps them sleep better, which is a huge complaint in menopausal women is insomnia. So it really helps them relax and sleep better. So progesterone is huge. So in order to know what you need, you need to have your blood tested, analyze that, and then you decide the balance. That how that works? Yeah, you know, so it, it's hard with women sometimes, and, and they have they go through a, a phase called perimenopause, which is before menopause, and, and anything can happen in that phase. So we typically diagnose menopause as about a year when your periods, you know, are over, and you have an FSH, which is a blood test above fifty, and then it's pretty safe to say that you're now menopause although when you're not really making any more estrogen. However, there's other hormones that women should really consider before menopause. And a big one is testosterone and thyroid. Those are two huge hormones that women, particularly women, tend to not think about because they think of testosterone as a man hormone. But it, it's, it's really important for women to make sure that they have adequate testosterone levels. Okay. So again, the way you have to figure that out is, is to go in, talk to your doctor and work through that process because it may take a while to find the perfect mix for you to help you feel better. Yeah. And I would suggest going to a provider that, that really has studied hormone replacement therapy because it's not something you get from traditional you know schooling it's something you have to really look into a little deeper and have you know advanced training in which is because it is a different way. yeah well yeah i i it's a good paradigm for me because i tend to look at health a little more holistically and i look for ways of enhancing health by using more natural ways and bioidentical hormones are right up that alley well, that makes perfect sense, and, and a lot of people want that, and so that's important that you are getting them the information that they need. So I feel like you've sort of set the record straight on the hormone situation. What else would you add into the mix of what we're talking about when it comes to hormones? Yeah, I sort of just, you know, glazed over thyroid, and i got to tell you that I have so many people that come in with the symptoms of, I'm fatigued, I'm tired, I, I just can't seem to, to lose this weight no matter what I do. Um, I try to diet and I try to exercise. I'm cold in situations where other people say it's not cold. I just don't feel right anymore. I can't put my finger on it. I just don't feel like I think I should feel. And you know, we, we really talk about thyroid and they'll say, well, my doctor tested my thyroid and it's fine. And I, if I, one day when I die, one of my tombstones to say, normal does not equal optimal. You know, just because it's normal doesn't mean it's optimal, right? And you really need to look at the hormones that thyroid produces. In particular, there's two hormones, T4 and T3. And it's really T3 that is most active at the cellular level. And a lot of doctors don't even test that. And I see so many patients, even the ones that are already on thyroid medications, they don't have enough T3 and they're manifesting all the symptoms of an underactive thyroid. So thyroid is so important and it's like turning a light switch on sometimes in, in people that have an underactive thyroid. It's like, you know, opening up a, a new world that, that they didn't know existed. So you, you really got to think about thyroid. Um, that would be men and women though. 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I know I said, you know, it's, it's something with, with women that we, we think a lot more about the hormones, but, but yeah, I mean, with everyone. Yeah. Yeah, especially with the fact that we're walking around here and everybody's overweight and everybody everybody just wants to be the best version of themselves. Yeah. And I think thyroid, and again, I use bioidentical thyroid replacement, not synthetic thyroid. So I tend to feel like that's your better, most effective route of replacing thyroid is to use the bioidentical version rather than the synthetic versions. Well, if I've heard anything from you during this conversation, it's that you believe in the bioidentical, not the synthetic, which is where you get a true version of what your body would need. That's right. So bioidentical is the same genetic molecule or blueprint that your body produces naturally. So there's nothing synthetic added to the mix. And I think that's why it's so much safer and so much more effective is because we're just matching what the body produces on its own rather than adding in other things that the body doesn't know and doesn't recognize. I think this is a, a conversation that we could continue with, but I, I, want, I want the takeaway for our audience today to understand that if you don't feel good, you're, you're approaching later in life, and maybe some young people also need to know if there's something going on with them, whatever the case may be, whether it's thyroid or your uh, you know, menopausal, get advice from someone that you trust and someone that deals in uh, the whole picture, more of a holistic picture. And that may be the key for you to feeling better and having your best self, your best health, and not just popping a synthetic pill for a symptom, but really getting healthy. Yeah, you said it perfectly, you know, and I think we all just want to, want to, function as well as we can for as long as we can. We want to feel good. And, you know, that's really what we're after is just allow people to feel better. And, you know, being health preventative. I mean, what I really get geeked out about isn't so much giving people, you know, energy and better libido and more muscle mass and decrease. All that stuff is wonderful, but it's that things under the surface. It's the cardiovascular protection, less likely developing dementia and Alzheimer's, you know, improve bone health. Um, you know, it's going to make you a better employee, employer, um, husband, wife, friend, because you're going to feel better, right? So, I, you know, I just, I think the thing that I enjoy the most out of practice is, you know, when you can look at someone, you can restore intimacy into a marriage that there has not been any intimacy, or you can help somebody reach their goals. It, it just makes a world of difference. Well, I want to thank you for your time for this conversation as well. We can we can come back and reconvene and talk about some more topics and ways to help people live healthier, happy lives. And if folks want to get in touch with you, we'll, we'll make that information available to them in the description below. But wherever they may be watching from, the important thing is to find someone reputable and someone that truly has their best interest at heart and will take that holistic approach so that they can live a healthier, happier life. I want to thank you for being with me today. I look forward to talking to you again. Thank you so much, Dr. Cohen. All right. Thank you. Have a great evening. Absolutely. Folks, thanks for watching this edition of Conversations with Nicole. Hope you have a great day.